Hey everybody, it's Ray and you are listening to the Insecure Recap for Season 3, Episode 8, the season finale entitled Ghost Like. I'm going to sit here and pretend like I'm not happy for this to be the last episode because Lord knows I want my Mondays back. But I am happy to talk about the ending of this excellent season of Insecure and today I brought my three homies with me. First we have up Chris, say hey. Hey. We got Lloyd say hey. And we have CY. Hey. What the hey. fuck are you? Nigga, who the fuck are you? Are you hanging from the lagoon? What the fuck <laughs> is that? Anyway. No, okay. What's up, y'all? What's good? On this episode, we finally wrap up everything that's been going on in this season. We get a little bit of closure with Molly and Andrew and Molly at her job. And we see uh, Issa kind of check Molly on some of her shit lately. We finally find out what the fuck Nathan's been doing. And we actually get a little bit of, you know, pick up on Lawrence. Um, so before we get started, of course, I have to ask the question, starting off with Lloyd. What did you think about this episode? And yeah, we'll just start with the episode. Well, okay. I like how they tied up a lot of loose ends, and I loved watching Issa get into Molly's ass for a while, for once, because it seems like it's been the dynamic with the it's been Molly getting in Issa's ass. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought the ending overall was anticlimactic, and uh, I'm hoping it's because they're gonna surprise us with next season starting in like February or some shit. Because <laughs> really, <laughs> okay. What about you, Chris? Um. I don't know. I feel like this episode was kind of odd, but it was nice. I still like the way it ended. It was it was like a little it was wrapped up in a tight little bow. So I I liked it. I don't think it was it's not my favorite episode of the season, but it was okay. Okay. And what about yours, CY? Um I, I like the episode overall. I like kind of the direction that they're going. I feel like this was a good little cliffhanger if you're really into the stories um as always i like the the creative ways that they put their shots together um they've really been killing it in this season just the cinematography how they're choosing to frame people wardrobe like everything Mm -hmm. they're doing it right so um yeah i'm just you know i'm I'm looking forward to the storyline progressing it was kind of anticlimactic but i understood it i was like okay and there yeah. All right. Instead of trying to get this big, huge <gasps> moment, you know, and then all of a sudden you become scandal and you become predictable and shit. Yeah. So. Um, as for me, I thoroughly enjoyed this season. I think that this show uh, so far it does a really good job of not overextending itself, especially with the eight episodes. I definitely think that it's best mm-hmm. to be left wanting more than to kind of wish that y'all would have chilled after a certain point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I am happy to see that overall I will also say that the season finale was pretty anticlimactic we didn't really get any big you know any big anything we didn't even find out what the fuck is going on with Derek and Tiffany which I'm pissed about but cause you have been on that shit cause like I wanna know I fucking go. saw will, that I'll shit bro go, will not let it go fuck that shit I saw that shit and I wanna know what's the fucking deal we all wanna know sis and you know they are gonna give it to us eventually relax Raven when the fuck is, is that finna be? A, no, because I really had my Olivia heart. Benson, bitch. I've been dying to know what's been going on, and I've been dying like they're gonna give it to us this season because she's pregnant with the baby, and we gonna find it. It's gonna be, uh, and we ain't get shit. <laughs> That's right, bitch. You better be motivated. Listen, I've been sitting in the background just <laughs> just jumping around quietly like, come on, give it to me, come on, give it to me, and I I still ain't got it yet. Yes. So. I, I She's mean, about to solve the mystery of these vicious felonies, I need bitch. to motherfucking <laughs> no. Look, I've been wrong two times. I've been wrong a lot, but I'm right on this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just, I just want to see how it's all going to turn out because I, 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 I ain't forgot. All these other niggas forget. I ain't forgot. Okay. You know what would be hilarious if they never if they, get to it. it no, if they didn't even if they didn't address it until like season six, and you were like, "God damn it, motherfucker!" <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm on I'm on Issa's head. I'm on Issa's ass about this. What's up with the Tiffany? What's up? So when we gonna? I mean, I'm gonna wait because you know I'm here. I'm just saying, I ain't forgot. I ain't forgot. So let's get into 
the um actual breakdown of the episode uh the first scene that we have is Issa hitting the streets she is trying to find vendors for her um for her block party um she's going around to different uh vendors you know just asking them hey i'm having this block party and basically she's getting shortchanged by everybody everybody's telling her no one guy was like damn y'all beggars are getting creative that shit had right. me hollering sis i was he's like you vagrants Ooh, real creative let me tell you and i'm sure that nigga has heard it all that yeah. was rude <laughs> um another lady was Did like we all wait? huh Oh, y'all just cut out. All I heard was Lloyd say, that shit had me, and then a long dramatic pause. I didn't hear oh, um, that was your end end. We also <laughs> had the one lady who was like, mm, sounds like money coming out of my pocket and going into yours. Nope. Mm-hmm. And then we have another guy who was like, how many bitches is gonna be there? And she was like, <laughs> one bitch. And a nigga in the back started laughing. That's when I started cracking that. That shit was funny. <laughs> Because I'm like, there needs to be somebody around to laugh at Issa's ass more often. Just, you know. How many bitches? One bitch. So, <laughs> um, I guess after that, Issa and Molly get together for lunch. And they're just kind of having a conversation where Issa's like, you know what? This little block party shit is on hold because I'm not getting nowhere. And I need a job, like a J-O-B that pays a check. And, you know, amen life out here is rough and molly's like yeah girl you know it's about you know that little block party or whatever was not hitting for what it was hitting for and it's time for you to start refocusing yourself so i'm not the only bitch making good money so um Issa's Issa like yeah felt that jab too yeah she was like you need a you need a regular job like a night and Issa's like yeah i need a boring job girl like yours and molly was like bitch my job is not boring um and so she kind of we kind of get into a little bit of a conversation where Molly's like, you know, I'm, you know, my job, everybody's being hella shady. And Issa's like, well, you did play the fuck out of Torian. And she was like, no, I am not trying to be like all the other women at my job that stuck at associate. A bitch is trying to be partner. And if I was a man, everybody would say I was aggressive and ambitious and a go getter. They wouldn't use, you know, no negative shit when nobody say nothing about me. And Issa was just kind of like, I mean, I guess, you know, you are a little shady. Uh, so does anybody have anything to say about this? I mean, it's like part? one of those moments where you like, you do have a point in the grander scale of things, but we're not talking about society right now. We're talking about your ass. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? It's like when you're trying to get your friend together and they give you a, a, this grand ass excuse. It's like, we're not scale it back down since we're not talking about the whole world and what uh, we talk about you and what you did is still shady, despite that being true. Cause the two things can be true. And I think that's the part that Molly didn't want to admit, but she a lawyer. That's what she do. Dance yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that though. I mean, that's the game. Like, she gotta, you gotta play that way in some sort of way at some point, you know. And I mean, she did come in, you know, trying to be buddy buddy and you know, trying to be cute and be cool and shit. And you know, niggas was on some bullshit right away. So it's not all her fault. I, I can definitely say that they didn't, they didn't welcome her with the most open arms. I would put it like. Mm, well, I, I, a part of that, I feel like she wasn't uh, welcomed with open arms because she was being that bitch in the office. Like my old job, no, nah, we don't, you know, nobody yeah, likes it. <laughs> from jump, yeah, from jump, she I wasn't hate this receptive. Whole so much. Like <laughs> from the jump, she wasn't receptive to anything. Yeah, and so. and then on top of that, it's like okay, so then you go in, you go for the power play. She wasn't in my. Well, we'll get into that later because that gets a little bit further down the line. So, um, you know, Issa was like, well, you know what? I'm not worried about none of that shit because it's my birthday, and last year's birthday was whack, and this year's birthday, I am trying to have a drama free birthday. And so it turns out that Molly planned her a surprise for a birthday party. No, I'm not taking you to Mexico to get real Mexican food because, bitch, we not in a relationship. <laughs> Which I get. Um, don't none of my friends take me to Mexico neither, Issa. Okay. So uh, next what week, fucking you, bitch. What? Take um, you to Mexico. I deserve. If I had the money, I would take you to Mexico. Thank you. Key word is if I had the money. The Molly but got the money. Don't, we ain't fucking, bitch. When I get the money, I will <laughs> take you to Mexico. Amen. She's talking to me, not you, Grace. Shut That's up. What you don't realize she's talking to me. <laughs> so uh we meet up with Lawrence and his dad and we finally get to see uh a little bit more of Lawrence's family 
and uh you know it seems like they don't really get to see each other very often i'm assuming that lawrence is also is a transplant to la or maybe his dad just doesn't live there anymore but they're catching up they're having good conversation dad is asking him about Issa, and he's kind of like oh you know Issa's cool or whatever and then dad acts he's like, cool or whatever and dad is just like mm. oh okay well are y'all dating or are y'all done and he was like no we're done he was like oh y'all niggas is done done like yeah we yeah. done done no one thought that was hilarious that they are right on trend with the fucking instagram trends right now i definitely Not laughed is- and i wondered if that's what it was or if that's just perfect timing of niggas, niggas. i think it's a little bit of both because yeah, we've been doing that both. but i feel like that's how black folks been talking for a while now right, right. that's why i say probably a little bit of both because you know that extra yeah, that's the, the emphasis. You got to double it up for emphasis. Right. Okay? Do you yes, like him? Yeah, we're always not, extra. Not just to the craziness. Ha ha doing it right now. Yeah, like do, like, do you like him or do you like him like him? You know. Right. That's a thing. Um. So the dad was like, well, are you dating? And Lauren's like, yeah, you know, kind of, you know, getting out here. It's just hard because all the chicks I find got baggage or they divorced or da 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 The dad was like, y'all never want to put in no work for shit. Damn. All baggage, y'all asses AKA ever do. <laughs> <gasps> you, nigga, you got yeah. the heaviest bags of us all over here <laughs> nigga, talking nigga. shit. You, Not you. only was you eating groceries, nigga, you was eating the baggage. You was putting the beer at risk, nigga. Right. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, you but definitely. He I'll definitely left out his own bro. shit. Definitely left right. out his own shit. Like, uh, you gonna put your daddy up to speed on that uh threesome that you were a participant in? Well, the train you got ran on you. You gonna talk about that? <laughs> that, liquor, that liquor store train, that shit was straight like a porn. Ran him in the parking lot of the liquor store, wrote his face, sent him home. <laughs> wrote his face, insulted him, then sent him home. Insulted him, ignored yep. him, and then sent him home. <laughs> Sounds like Tuesday night at my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Get out, Crystal. Just leave. I've had enough. <laughs> okay. So, you know, the dad is like, well, y'all don't stick together and y'all don't fix anything. And Lawrence was like, you know, well, what about, you know, you and mom? I want a relationship like that where we all just get married in the simple. He was like, nigga, we got married and then put in work. He was like, well, what, you know, everybody got baggage. She's like, nigga, me and your mama had baggage. But we put in some work to make it, you know, to try and make it work. Um, And so that's really kind of all that came of that situation. So what do you guys feel, think? I like I like that point he made because I feel like our I've seen people romanticize older generations relationships like oh yeah they've been married for 50 years and you know that's that's how it should be and you know yeah. today Back people don't want to do nothing yeah and I'm like Ready? wait a minute I'm like whoa, whoa <laughs> their marriages whoa. were a hot fucking mess they chose to stay together like niggas today just be like I'm tired of you after one thing and be like I'm out which is fair depending on what the thing is but like I, think I have to disagree I don't think there was a lot of cases where they had no choice but to be together because mm-hmm. right that finances too. and or the laws in the case of mm-hmm. women black women most in case of the law you didn't have any anything without having a husband it wasn't until what 1970 something that you a woman was able to get a credit card without her husband as a co-signer so you can imagine what it was like for a black woman mm-hmm like a lot of our grandmas and grandpas stayed together because grandpa made all the money and grandma ain't knew that she left this nigga, she would have nowhere to go and no recourse for her and her children. It wasn't because she was so happily in love all 50 years. And that's the part that kills me. They make it seem like it's all sunshine and fucking rainbows right. for the whole 50 years. No, nigga. And right. then grandma on top of the fact. Had the grandpa a couple times. But then right, it's like on top of the fact. And grandma, grandma couldn't get a job. Grandma couldn't go to college. Grandma couldn't get a job. Grandma couldn't start her own business if she wanted to. Well, outside of all the skills. women who were trapped in matrimony, the women who decided right. to stay, um, a lot of it also has to do with the fact that you just don't feel like you have as many options. Like, I can go and date a nigga around on the other side of the world if I wanted to. You know, I could be in contact with all the niggas in the tri-state area with the, mm-hmm. with the flick of the wrist. And you didn't have that option back then. So we feel, I feel like in a, a part of it plays into the fact that like, we feel like we have more options and more than anything, we we're learning the reality behind what was going on in our uh, grandparents relationship, which is more what you guys were talking about. We're less of a women were trapped, but it was like, you know, or what, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. 
you know, and mm-hmm. then we find out that I mean, even outside of all that, and women being trapped, niggas still, my people were still having outside kids and second families, and your yep. uncle ain't really your grandpa's, but your grandpa don't know and shit like that. Like we're we're all coming to the understanding that like the things that our parents and grandparents did weren't all of what they were cracked up to be. And yeah, you know, like, and we, I think on one hand, it's like, yeah, we know that there's a lot of people who don't want to put in the work, but it's also a lot of times we realize that the work they work ain't fucking worth it. Would okay. I rather, would I, do I want to put up with that shit to have a 50th anniversary party? Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the other pieces about it that we tend to forget too, like our elders were doing a lot, like when you're in survival mode, like all the time, you even do, you even get yourself into situations in that survival mode instead of making the best possible decision for you because you're not healthy at the moment. You know, you do things for reasons that, you know, they make sense on the dollar and cent sign, but then, you know, as far as like giving people a good life and having a good life yourself and, you know, providing and all of that, you put yourself in a really tight situation, you know? So hopefully, you know, like you said, we everybody feels like they have more options and hopefully we move towards, you know, healthier relationships where we can kind of do decide what we want together instead of one person or society making that decision for us and then niggas just gotta do what they gotta do you know and all sorts of bullshit comes from it so that is true anybody else got anything to say about this lawrence and daddy scene before i move on i just want to say i'm happy to see that it was your typecast daddy ass nigga i'm like why are you always playing the daddy every time i see you niggas (laughs) (laughs) i was about to say he's that's the light. He's always the somebody's father, okay? He, he is, or he's always the quintessential light skinned nigga for like a lot of 80s and 90s movies. <laughs> Can I yeah. also say, though, that I definitely saw my dad in him, especially when he was complaining about the phone? Yeah, I, I would have kept my damn mm-hmm. flip phone. I was like, Daddy, Same shut thing. The hell up. I knew that shit. I knew exactly what was happening. Same thing when I went to Atlanta. Boy, here. Let me Listen. give a notepad. Show me what it do. Oh my I don't know how many times I've had to listen to my dad complain about how he would still have Windows 93 in his BlackBerry if he had the choice. Like, well, Daddy, okay, you can't. Oh, my God. And you don't. Yes. Okay? I, I miss when the phones had buttons. Well, Daddy, it got buttons on the side. Four of them. Three my touch. father once told me that I didn't need cell phones because I could just use, a, like, a toll booth. A what? A toll. A toll. Like, like, a, a, like a phone booth. No, a pay I know phone. what you're saying, but still, a what? I can't even yeah. remember the last time I seen a payphone. Yeah, that's what it pay you, Yeah, even if you he, had one right outside your place, you ignore it so much because who even thinks about using that nasty thing? Listen, and then he graduated to I just can use a payphone to fine. You can get a cell phone, but you can get a jitterbug. You should get a jitterbug cell phone, wow. like the jitterbug, jitterbug for the old with people. With a big phone with a big button. Yes, he seriously said that. He said so I could save money. Well. Then again, I only talk to three niggas anyway, so maybe he under something. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, y'all, uh, we see Molly and she is back at work and she uh, goes into her office. She's talking to her assistant. And the assistant's like, actually, the bosses need you in the conference room. And the real nigga's chest got tight like, oh, she about to get fired. Uh-huh. <laughs> what you done uh-huh. did, Molly? What you done My did? whole heart dropped. Like, ooh. Yep. It, this is a video at you. Even, is, is it? It was a video with you fighting at Coachella, and now they know you about to get fired. <laughs> Fuck, you know, I was, I was, I was stressing out. Then they came in, and basically she sat down next to Tori, and Torian's butthole was real tight. You was sitting <laughs> up real straight, and he, they was like, "Well, we're uh, putting you onto our new big, huge contract, and we need our A one niggas on, and you and Torian are going to be on it together as co counsel." And, and uh, Molly's like, "Eh, what? We're going to co counsel? Oh my god!" Thank you so much. And the bosses said, you know, we were really, really impressed with the way that you stepped up for in that presentation, and we really appreciate it. So we want to put you on the account. And Torian was like, mm, it, it's nice to have some co counsel that's just as aggressive as a Molly. Fucking hate yeah, he ass, is a Squidward nigga. ass nigga. Mm, he was so mad. He was so mad. It was so delicious. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely in that moment. I was like, you know what? Fuck that nigga, Molly. Still his job. You shouldn't have pissed off the black woman at first. You should have stole his job first and then got on with the black woman. But fuck him. Yeah. That's true. Because even though I understand what she did, like, nigga, come on, bro. You just mad. I don't feel like you're upset because she uh, did the right thing. You're mad because she stole your shine. And you got to right. let that ego go, bro. Exactly. So, um, next we see Issa, and she went to street meet. I I really wrote that. Yeah. In, in notes. Ma'am, 
and is I'm sorry because like I I wrote it. I, I just was, want you to stop calling this street meat. I'm so mad. I hope she gets a drop there so I can always call him street meat. Street meat is on your mind so much. Because I can't Mad remember. On. Whenever I go to say it, like, even when I'm watching the show, I'm like, what was the name of that fucking... What was the name oh, of them damn kids? Just look it up. Just look it up. I like street That's all. I like street meat. Put it in your nose. In this scene right behind her. And she said it, like, four times. Like, just put it in your nose. I was, well, I was Next time doing you see it, it off of memory. Yeah, no. Your, I, and plus, memory, your not, memory sucks. Your bitch. memory told you street meat? That's the your only thing I can remember because it's funnier than street beats or whatever fuck their name is. is fuck yeah. That's what your memory tells you? you know what? Your fuck memory has been having street meat on its <laughs> mind for about a week. You better go get some street meat, girl. So um, she's at the interview with uh, the Beat Street. A lot of smoke street meat. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks. Sorry. I'm Sorry. trying to run a show here, please. Thank you. Mm. I could, but go ahead. So, Phil. Beach Street. The Phil. Um, what's the fucking kid's name? Now you have got me feeling bad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Now, now we did it. Oh, nigga, y'all just call me. it dancing group. Just say dancing group or dancing kids or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, so these uh, Apollo prodigy ass kids. She's at the... um. <laughs> interview and finally we see her at the interview which i'm happy about because i was like molly i mean isa what happened to the the street meet kids so she's at the interview and you know she's kind of talking to the guy and the guy's like well what happened at your old job and she was like you know well i just wanted to go along with something that would uh follow along more with my passion i mean of course you conveniently left out how you started a racist education program and then uh gave your job no notice but that's i mean who doesn't lie to interview that's what you're supposed to do um so the guys kind of like you know we like you and i like what i see we just have to check our budget and see if you we will be able to bring you on and she's like okay woo, street meet and he was like huh the fuck was that? Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't sound like that kids. was me clicking. That was me sucking my teeth. Oh no! There's there's somebody either being murdered or laughing outside of my door. I don't know. Um. So I mean, I don't know if anything really came of this. Anybody get anything off of this? Mm, no. I mean, you know, it's foreshadowing for the next season. I guess we'll see what happens. I still think that uh, something's going to happen between that job and her event where they're either going to be a part of it or see what she did or I don't know. I feel like that should be an easy tie-in or she's going to forego doing that for or bring the idea to, you know, now nah, you got me want to call street meat, Lord. Oh, oh. She's a better name. Can, you should consider it. Let's just move on. She didn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, she lied on her job interview. I'm proud of her for not trying to be honest. <laughs> let's find let's that these characters be wanting to be honest at the wrong fucking times. Yeah. Like, now right. is the time, bitch. So um, we see Molly, and she is sitting outside of Issa's house. She texts her like, yeah, let's go, bitch. I'm ready to go. I got your birthday surprise or whatever. And so then Molly is chilling. She looks out her rearview mirror, and she sees Nathan's ass walking up to the apartment, and she hops out and runs interference. And she gets the nigga, what are you doing here? And Nathan's like, oh, uh, I, I came to see Issa. She's like, does, you know, does she know that you're here? And she was like, no. So then she's like, well, then why, nigga, are you here? You can't just go away for a fucking month and not say shit to nobody and think that you're just going to come back. Skedaddle. Scram, nigga. Shoe fly. Right. I was so Good proud of Molly. Fucking yeah. Listen, yeah. that moment, that, that rare reminded me of why the fuck Molly and Issa need to be friends because Molly handled that shit like a real bitch. Like a real bitch. She's like, Issa, of all the Issa days, Issa been- nigga. Issa would have been in trouble if she opened that door and that nigga was standing there looking all fine, starry eyed. That nigga was looking mm. like them sorry ass flowers. flowers. Mm. Yeah. Piece of sorry fun. ass flowers. I throw them in the trash after we get through fucking. <sighs> Hate that nigga. <laughs> First, get some dick. Right. I just want to make sure it wasn't the Ferris wheel that was causing them orgasm. Right. right. And to be sure. real, hey, you can leave. Like you Nathan gotta, was standing the there looking the all sorry, looking like a light skinned pit bull, and I was like, "Oh, he's so fine. Mm. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry." You gotta for do you an inspection me. on the dick to make sure it's real, and then you gotta proceed from there. You never really know. You gotta figure it out. Exactly. You gotta be thorough. <laughs> so uh, Nathan carries on his little light skinned way, 
and uh, Molly get, Issa gets in the car, and it turns out that the uh, they uh, blind she blindfolds her, takes her, opens up her eyes, and she's like, "Oh, you took me to a line." And she was like, well, there's a food at the end of the line. And she's like, no, bitch, it's a movie at the end of the line. She turns around and turns out Issa's favorite movie is The Incredible, The Last Dragon. Yes. Yes. I love that. But, but, but remember, like classic. but wait, remember, she said, Did, bitch, you took me to Beverly Hills on a shopping spree. <laughs> she's like, we are not like, dating. We are not dating. She's, she's like, we are not dating. And she said, yes, we are. That's my girlfriend, y'all. <laughs> she's like, bitch, get up off me. My man might be here. Real. <laughs> The realest <laughs> friendship ever. So um, they're going to see show enough. They're standing. Uh, they're standing in line waiting on, I guess, like to get tickets or to get in or whatever. And um, I forgot what, what exactly Molly said, but basically she saw, she was talking about uh, Issa's block party and she called it her little project. And Issa was like, mm, bitch, Issa little. Issa checked it real quick, like, little? Little, bitch. And she was all like, black folk know what that means. So. Mm-hmm. It could be, it, it could either be innocuous or it could be shade. Because it's sometimes that you mean like, Most oh, little. Shade, though. It depends. Yeah, I'm about to say Molly's nine out of ten times. Yeah, and it's coming from Molly's mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, it's shade, bitch. <laughs> And it was shade. I mean, you know, well, it, we'll, it was we'll, little. It was tiny. We'll actually get there because I, I have some things to say. Um, and so then Lawrence bumps into Issa and Lawrence like, of course, nigga, I should have known you was going to be here. They have a little moment where they recite lines, you know, kiss my converse. Am I the greatest? Am I the baddest? Show enough. It was real cute. Lawrence is like, okay, I got to go because Chad and friends are over there. And Issa's like, okay, bye. And then she kind of has, you know, it's like a, a, a look that lingers about 15 seconds too long. And I was like, okay. I didn't need that. I didn't need that. Yeah, I don't know if I need that either. Uh, and so um, they finally get in line. It turns out that Kelly has been holding them a spot and apparently a big ass spot zoned off by construction cones, also known as birthday party hats. Uh, we are, <laughs> of course, the realist. We are blessed with more Kelly time, as Kelly explains it, the reason that she blocked off such a large section is because she's not trying to have a repeat of Coachella where she has to whoop some white bitch's ass over uh, some lawn space. And Issa's like, oh, well, speaking of bitches, uh, white bitches, are you fighting with pregnant bitches? And Kelly kind of rolls her eyes and sits down. And Molly's like, oh, well, no, I don't think so, because Tiffany made Kelly the godmom. And Kelly was like, yeah, and I don't know why she did that, because in the event that she dies, I got to take the baby. And Issa was like, um... I think, I think the daddy gets the baby, and she's like, "Good," because if I wanted a kid, I would have kept the first one. <laughs> and I hollered from the, the, my guts, Ooh, from the bottom of my toes. I laughed so hard. I was like, "Why is she like this?" I love her so much. And so then, you know, they kind of have a okay. And so then um, they start talking about exes and everything like that. And Kelly was like, Mm-mm, girl, this is a graveyard. Don't talk about it. Because I've seen three or four niggas that I done fuck. And she started going off on this nigga named Quandra. Fuck you, Quandra. You ain't shit. And then she was again. <laughs> and she, oh, hold on. That ain't Quandra, but he is fine. Hold on. Excuse me. Hold my drink, bitch. Ah! By the way, Kelly was dressed like show enough. Awesome. <clears throat> I loved it. <laughs> loved it. Kelly's just uh, such a national treasure. This lives right. Live. More Kelly, more Chad. Thank you. And also, while they're having this conversation, uh, Molly, uh, Issa brings up the fact that she bumped into Lawrence, and then Molly is like, "Oh yeah, well I'm done with Andrew because he was doing too much." And I looked at my screen, and then I looked at Issa on the screen. Is that what he was doing? Right. You know what? All right, bitch. So. <laughs> I, I just I did I did the cutaway look like they do in in the office or in parks and recreation. Look directly right. into the so, camera. Oh, yeah. I glanced it to the camera like really. That's what I wanted Issa to do. I wanted Issa to just look at the camera like. Oh, I forgot y'all can't see me. Um, because <laughs> I look directly off into the camera. My bad. So um, yeah, she lied about that or whatever. So we uh switch over to Lawrence who is still the uh at on the line. And she is, he goes over and he's talking to Chad and a new friend who is actually, fuck, I remember his name. Ta- I thought that was Chad's cousin. It is Chad's Mike. cousin, Mike, but he That's is actually an Instagram comedian. 
He's yeah, the light skinned dude from um I, I see him on a lot of all deaf digital. To hear more. There it is. Yeah, to hear on great taste. He's, yeah, he's on great taste. He's a part of all deaf digital. So I was hyped to see him because I'm happy to see, you know, niggas from the internet getting their shine. He oh, is. Great. He was on Brook he was on Brooklyn nine nine too. So shout out to him. He out here getting nice. roles. Mm-hmm. Nice. Out here working. So uh, we see them together, and it turns out that uh, after his brief religious experience, Chad and buying a purse, Chad was taken back by his fiance, and Lawrence was like, "Nigga, how the fuck did you get her to take you back?" And he was like, "I'm not. I went and I groveled and I begged. The fuck, do you mean?" <laughs> and so you know, was, I did a thing. She forgave that thing, and now we moved on. You know how this works. Yeah, I'm not trying to do this partnership over with nobody else. I'm not trying to start over with nobody fuck else. Shit, that's it and that's all. Um, still be interested to see how religious he is afterwards or maybe it was just that one time cleansing. I understand. Got baptized once and it didn't take. So, <laughs> you know, maybe they got to dip you twice. I don't know. I was just happy that the water didn't boil. You under the water. You need to go meet God. You, you got to soak in that. You need to really get resurrected. I mean, it didn't boil over, so that's all I can really ask for, I guess. Um, bubbled up, though, I heard. I heard it definitely bubbled up. Yeah, something. So, uh, we uh, the movie, the event actually starts, and a lady comes onto the microphone, and she's just like, hey, everybody, you know, thanks for being here. We are... St- uh, this used to be, I mean, this is a place where they usually show a bunch of movies, but we uh, came together and made it so that uh, for uh, once a week, every for this entire month, we are going to be, you know, showing classic black cinema, starting off with The Last Dragon. You know, we really appreciate you guys for being here. And uh, while this conversation is going on, we see Molly talking to Issa, where she basically explains like, hey, the girl who put this on is the one of the girls that we met at Molly's. I'm not Molly, at Tiffany's baby shower. And she put this whole thing on herself and she's really fucking dope. She got a white voice, but she turned the shit out. Um, And so Issa's like, oh, this is real nice. And she's all inspired and shit. And... um then the movie starts so does anybody want to have anything to say about anything i just said before i get going i feel like it's a good place to start well um, um, what's her name i can't remember i looked it up the one the curator of the event the one in the green dress with the long ponytail i don't know i want to say her name was denise but i could be a whole liar no denise is the lady from the church let's call her uh, kelsey see? for now kelsey yeah yeah she's fine Oh, is that what she wanted? <laughs> yeah, yep. I seen her on the screen. I was like, oh, "You so ugly." Find her. Uh, do me a favor. See, why find her real name? Um. So everybody's all inspired and everything like that, and they start the movie. Uh, Molly runs over to the concession stand to get something to eat, and she bumps. And this this place really is a grave job, a graveyard. It's the ghost of Dick's past because we bump into Jared, who we have not seen since the first Yay! season. And so they're having a conversation. He asks Molly if she's a judge yet. And of course, she's like, no, not yet. Ha, ha, ha. Order in the court. And I was like, ooh. Ooh. Okay. Choices. <laughs> Choices. And so then uh, Jared fills us in. You know, he's regional manager of uh, Enterprise right now. You know, we'll still pick you up. You know, they joke a little bit back and forth. And she's like, you look good. And he's like, oh, yeah, you too. And then some man comes over. And it's like, hey, I'm headed back over to our tent. Give me a drink, please. And Jared's like, oh, yeah, cool. Got you. And so Molly's eyes are the size of the moon. And um, for those who have forgotten, Jared was the ex who got his dick sucked by a man one time, decided that the whole gay life thing isn't for him. And Molly was never able to get past that. So, of course, now Molly is. Which doesn't disqualify you from being a boyfriend. Right. So, um molly of course being as obvious and dumb as she possibly can d- stammers out and he's like oh I, I i i got to go and he's like well you ain't even get nothing she's like oh well i'm fasting because i'm muslim well, no i'm not muslim but you know i respect it because ramadan amen and kind of scuttles off <sighs> Blow, ugh, just oh my god being as awkward and awful about everything as possible um, so she goes and sits down and Kelly comes back and it's like, damn, that was Quandrill and now we back together. And so Molly tells him, like, nigga, I just saw Jared and Jared is, you know, he looks good, but I think he is gay. So no, she said, I knew it. She, she said, said I, I knew it. it. I knew it. 
She was so sure about it. With her damn homophobic ass, yeah. Man, I was feeling the same way about that whole little... Okay, so I wasn't tripping. So, I knew that he that wasn't his boyfriend because that would have been way too obvious. But if that was me, I would be like, oh. Ah. I can't lie and say I wouldn't have gossip just said the same shit. I don't know. I ain't shit. I'm willing to admit it. Anybody we else? Know. Oh, fuck y'all. Y'all thought the same thing. Anyway, so um, I'm trying to see. Lawrence. Lawrence comes up to Issa and gives her some candy and, you know, for a birthday and a nigga behind him. Like, sit your tall head ass down. <laughs> Started crying. <laughs> So they were having a conversation. I guess, you know, you don't have to watch the movie since you've seen it a thousand times, but still. Um, they're, you know, having the conversation and he's asking her, you know, how's the event going? And he's just like, you know, honestly, I feel like, you know, the events on hold, it just became a lot and it was too much. And I'm just, you know, I'm really trying to make the right decisions and, you know, not dive into anything too quickly. Um, and Lawrence kind of gave her a look. And did anybody else catch it, or was it just me? I did. I saw that. What'd you think? I did not catch it. What did I miss? What about? He... Well, wait, wait, wait. What about you? See, why did you give her a look? Did you see the look? Yeah, I seen the look. Okay, go ahead, Crystal. Sorry. Oh, I was just telling Lloyd. It was real quick. It was just like he turned his chin up a little bit. He was like, huh. Mm-hmm. What, what? What did you think the I mean, look he was? Walking was? away. Yeah, he tried her. No. Well, what did you think the uh, look was, Crystal? I don't know. I guess maybe he was disappointed. That's what I thought. I thought that his... Oh, his... that look. Yeah. He was sitting there just kind of listening. Yeah, he's def. I, I think he was... Because for him to hear that, he's kind of like... Nah. You, you ain't changed. That and no, nah, you just keep fighting. Like, you just keep doing it. You know, like, you don't just give up. Like, you're real early in this game. Like, you haven't really sacrificed shit and you're already giving up. Like, you know, what's your plan? Type yeah. Shit. And we can actually get, that's what I felt too. I felt like his, the words of his dad was still ringing true in his head as far mm-hmm. as like, you got to work and you got to fight. And when he heard that out of Issa, I felt like whatever spark he had in her, whatever was rekindling kind of, you know, went down a little bit. Cause it's like, nigga, you was just hyped 20 minutes ago and now you super deflated but we'll actually get into that a little bit uh, later when uh in the episode um so after the event is over everybody's packing up and jared comes over and he's like you know hey everybody this is my brother and his wife and this is you know and so it's not his boyfriend and molly's sitting there looking like a dumbass and then she he's like oh and this is my girlfriend amber so mm. Hmm. The mm, one-two that punch. That egg on her face was fried hard, bro. I made a loud oh. hood rat sound. I made a loud hood rat sound when he said that. Yeah. He said, this is my girlfriend. I said, <laughs> <laughs> That is a very loud hood rat sound. You hit that one on the head. <gasps> yeah. Her face was cracked. cracked. Oh, I wanted to be like, Molly, you dropped something. Girl, your whole face. Let me help you. Yeah. yeah she whole face. Face was cracked. So. Yes. Um, uh, they and you know the conversation is kind of awkward because Molly is like, oh, you know, I mean, because right after she just told all her friends, yeah, that's her, that's his man, so she's looking like a dummy. So we Mm -hmm. uh, go fast forward a little bit to when Issa and everyone is leaving and she meets up with a old girl. Uh, did you find her real name, Cy? Yet? I'm looking. I think she's only on like one episode okay so he um oh that's fine he she she Issa meets up with old girl and they're kind of having a conversation and Issa's like well you know I was thinking about doing this thing in Compton no she said Inglewood I was thinking about doing this you know block party in Inglewood like how did you find the motivation to keep going and to you know keep pushing because all I keep hearing is no 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 and old girl was like girl I'm familiar with it but I just kept with it kept pushing kept getting on the right niggas nerves and eventually you know, I turned out with what I have here. And so they make that connection, which I think is dope and puts me a little bit back into the arena of wanting Issa to um, do the block party. Because at first, my biggest trepidation was the fact that she didn't have any connections and she didn't have anybody 
or anything yeah. so i felt like she was she needed to go and you know deal with street meat and probably work some of those networks there and then put did, it on did you did you say street meat Trepid. street meat and then networks ma'am i Ma'am, I was about to give you credit for saying trepidation, and then you said some damn street meat. You know what? And you said networks. That's terrible. You nasty. Ma'am. I said networks. Anyway. You said networks. <laughs> I think her name is, uh, damn, it just went with Ashley, I think. You know, we're only in one episode. They don't, they don't put no pictures. We'll call her Ashley so. until we learn otherwise. So, um, you know, but now that she's dealing with yeah, somebody that's... who has a little bit more experience with putting on large events like that, I'm a little bit more excited for her to get back into the um, into the the arena as far as the um, block party goes. Um. So, does anybody have anything? I thought that was really good for her because um, that was a good conversation for her to have and that was a good connect for her to have because I feel like this is probably going to lead her to find a job too. Mm, That's a good point. It's going to be a weird connect in a little bit. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Lloyd? Anything? I'm sorry, see why? I'm happy that she got to talk to somebody who don't know her entire situation so they can really believe in what she's trying to put out because braid homegirl with the long ponytail whatever her name is she don't know Issa for real for real ashley ashley don't know Issa for real for real she don't know all the shit in her background so i could kind of understand why molly can kind of be negative at times because it's like sis i've known you for x amount of years and i know how you can get about something you could be like really into it and then 10 seconds later you're not into it no more because of a little challenge so I, i'm happy that Issa got to meet ashley because ashley don't know all her baggage so all she's doing is feeding her this positive energy and, and she has the experience that Issa needs and she's giving basically telling her like sis it can be done but it is going to be hard and mm-hmm. she needed to hear that. she needed to hear that to get back on her yeah. shit yeah yeah that sounds good so uh, later on that night, we catch up with Issa and Molly. They're at home and they are getting ready for bed. And Issa uh, tells Molly that she's reconsidering starting up this block party again. And so Molly was like, oh, we're, we're doing this again? You know, just kind of downplaying like, no, like I thought that we were done with this. I thought she said that you weren't doing it anymore. And Issa was just kind of like, you know, I've been getting good signs and I've been, you know, happy you know i've been you know i'm thinking that i that i can probably pull this off and so molly is you know Issa's like you told me to listen to your instincts and molly was like no bitch i told you to listen to my instincts and my instinct said that you shouldn't be doing this you need to leave this shit alone it's not a good idea just just stop and so Issa pushed back a little bit and was like okay so you mean the same instincts that told you that that you know handled so well your gay lover that's act- uh not your gay lover anymore your gay boyfriend ex-boyfriend whatever Ooh. the fuck that was that those yeah. same instincts and Molly was like yeah bitch those instincts and Issa was just like you know what i think that um uh, I can, you know, and Molly was like, nigga, I got shit handled. Okay, I'm handling my job. I'm handling my personal life. And you need to be thanking me, bitch, because I handled Nathan earlier. And so then I heard the brakes squeal. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. As soon as left her mouth, I was like, this is not going to end well. This was not the time. She's a little defensive. Yeah, I heard defensive. the record scratch. Like, yeah. Yeah. Now, as, oh, as the friend who handles shit for people sometimes, you got to know when you need to drop that type of stuff in there. Yep. You don't need to do that when she's feeling defensive because she's going to be upset. You can say that later when she's, you know, a little bit like, I'm, it was a bad time. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. There was no finesse. She knew it was a bad time, though. And that's Molly being Molly and being petty instead of listening. She said that no. shit the way she said it. She knew. I mean, come on now. She's got more sense than that. She knew no, that she, wasn't the You see how she handling that shit at work? No, she don't got more sense than that. I genuinely she feel don't have like that I feel like that she need to have. But, I feel but like my she thing has is, but she feel like she can get away with everything. I don't think so. I think that she did the right thing, and the same reason why is because when she tells Issa that, Issa kind of gets upset and it's like, "Well, bitch, what do you mean?" And she was like, "Yeah, he was standing yeah. at your door with some weak ass <laughs> flowers, trying to apologize, yeah. and I sent his ugly ass away because fuck him." And and Issa was like, no, bitch, I should have handled that. And then East, Molly was like, bitch, how you handle going to his house? And I mean, and she, she she lightweight hit her on that. She really could have got her. Right. Issa yeah. Fucking crazy. 
Yeah. Like, they could have got arrested in the whole nine on some real shit. Like, what the fuck are you doing, fam? Yeah. And that was the thing. And that was the thing for me is I'm like, if he's, if they, because I thought this was going to start a real argument because I was like, this can go bad. Yeah. This can go real bad and it can get like yeah, season go one, on. season one argument bad. Where I'm like, ooh, things were said. <laughs> you know? But Issa was just like, well, I don't need you to handle shit for me. I can I can fucking handle things and you know I don't just cancel niggas like you do the way that you cancel every nigga that you come around and Molly was just like well when I'm right I'm right and Issa's like no bitch because you always assume the worst of people you always on some hella negative shit um and Molly was like how I'm on some negative she's like bitch you just played a nigga at your job you treat people, you know, you just treat people like shit and trample all over them. And she was like, no, I'm ambitious and I'm doing what I got to do. And Issa's like, okay, bitch, and then you're going to do what you got to do with who? You're going to be sitting there being partner by your motherfucking self and ain't nobody going to fuck with you because you done burned all them bridges. Yep. Shut her ass down. More more breaks screeching. Like, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Molly right. was Molly was on mute. Yeah. Mm, because she knew she hit a nerve. She knew she, she was like, hey, I know you're right. Mm-hmm. We, I but think I where also... it is like I love how the tone didn't go from she even though Issa was pissed like raving mad she didn't allow it to get to a point where she was talking to her friend just crazy and just saying yeah. shit to be hurtful the shit she said was constructive to my like this ain't who you are so you saying that you ain't going through some shit obviously you are because this ain't you right so, and I, and I also like how they ended it where she didn't just be like get the fuck out she's just like I'm gonna go get some water. <laughs> we won't finish talking about this shit. You know what I mean? Like Hello. that part was dope. Too. I have a question. Did you just use my name as a level of anger? Did you just say she was raving mad? Raging. Yes. Oh, I thought you said raging. Raving mad. Oh no, I said she was raving mad. No, I'm kidding. I said raging. But I'm just <laughs> I was like, mad. damn. <laughs> I know I cuss niggas out on occasion, but to be a level, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. You're definitely in a level. I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. I ain't I don't think I cussed anybody out like that lately. Feet got close, <laughs> but you know, that was it. Um Crystal is a level. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yeah. Crystal definitely yeah. is a you level. You can be crystal mad, nigga. <laughs> mm. Um, so okay, so this is what I have this is what the whole that whole scene read to me. I honestly believe that Molly thought that she did the right thing when it came to how she dealt with Nathan because I think that she did the right thing. When it came to Nathan, I would have did the same thing. I think she did the right thing too. By yeah. shooing him yeah. off. But yeah. I, I do think one. Okay. So one thing I will say uh, is that I am happy to see that they have grown to the fact that they're not just taking childish ass digs at each other anymore. Um, yep. Because when she was like the way that you handle Nathan, I thought that she was going to go into in the way that you handle quitting your job in the way that you like, I thought that she was really about to just, just, it could have went bad. Yeah, I thought it was gonna go left too. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm go. I was really happy to see that they are at the point where they can have constructive conversations, where they can criticize the mistakes that each other are making without it getting hurtful, like it did the first season. So there's that. Um, I will also say that I think that Molly is in such a habit of fixing shit for Issa and like handling shit for Issa that um, she, I, th- I think that she did do the right thing by uh sending nathan away um and i don't blame molly for being you know a little it for not believing necessarily in Issa's vision as far as the block party because Issa Issa's not on top of shit ever right and you know that ever and it's like you have to go and organize this whole thing and you don't have shit organized your life is a fucking mess overall and it from what i'm understanding it seems like it's always kind of been a mess and so it's hard for me as a friend to sit back and be like okay well i'm gonna have this continuous and renewed faith in your ability to put on this entire program by yourself when you couldn't even do a house party by yourself you almost burned down your fucking apartment like I said, it's easy. It's much easier for Ashley to believe in Issa because she, she don't got the years of uh, history. She ain't got years of evidence showing otherwise. So yes, yep. me like Molly, I can see why she's also like sis. Yeah, I know you, and this is too much for you. And you, you, yeah. even your closest friends is gonna doubt you sometimes. Not everybody's gonna believe in your vision, and that shit's okay. Yeah, it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard to succeed in front of the people that you've been the most vulnerable 
in front of because they're so used to trying to help you fix your mistakes or hear you complain about your mistakes that sometimes they don't see the shit that you're really good at or realize, you know, you need sunlight instead of, you know, just always pointing the finger. So, it's, yeah, I agree. It's good that she's linking up with other people because that's how she'll kind of find her wave and, and get her work done. Because, I mean, aside from, you know, saying good job or, oh, man, you shouldn't be doing this, Molly don't really do what she do. So she needs to go get around the people that does what she does so she can figure out how to do it instead of, you know, come to Molly about it. You know, come to Molly when you got a finished product and you're done. Come to her then. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I do identify with Molly with in the sense of like, I don't think that I'm one of the, I'm one of my friends who in a sense of things, I have my shit more together than a lot of my friends. And I think of that more in a they're a much they're in their creative process. They're much more creative and I'm much more of like a logical person. I'm a numbers person, you know, lists and stuff like that. And like that seems like that's more of who Molly is, where Issa's more of a, you know, Venn diagram chart, figure it out how it goes, go with the flow type of person. And so it's hard to step out of what you step out of the logic that you would apply for yourself for other people. Because Molly wouldn't have quit her job at the uh, at We Got Y'all and not have anything as a backup and be as broke as Issa is. Mm-hmm. But then Molly also probably wouldn't have, would have went off and got another job and wouldn't have the ambition to even try and put on a block party like that. And so it's one of those things of where you need somebody to keep you grounded, but then you also need a friend to shoot for the moon. And sometimes you got to let your friend just shoot for the moon and you just got to be down on the ground ready to catch them. Yep. I mean, who knows? You might be cheering your nigga on from the moon. Who knows? Real shit. <laughs> you know? That's what that's what support is, is about sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes you just gotta be there for no matter no matter what happens. Give your opinion. But then also really when you're when you're trying to be supportive to somebody and as close as they can be to you, really think about what you do and what they do. And then really think about how heavy you should make your opinion weigh. Because, again, Molly don't do shit like Issa. Issa don't do shit like Molly. Like, her opinion is valid, but also, you ain't got the same type of guts that she does. Like, she's going to go do some whole other shit. So, you know, I think Issa will eventually figure it out. You know, like we've been saying, this connection is good. And just bring it to her when you're done. You know, and Molly's going to celebrate her like she always do. And it's going to be dope. So, Yeah. Um, so we catch it back up with Molly at her job and she bumps into, uh, she sees Torian like crossing the hallway. So she runs on, she's like, Hey Torian, I just wanted to know if you had an idea for where you wanted to get started, uh, as far as this new, uh, contract goes and Torian's like, Oh girl, well I quit that. I'm actually going to go work with some other people on another case. And she was like, okay, well who, who, who's going to be my co-counsel then? And he was like, uh, I don't know. Probably got to ask yourself. Uh-huh. And he goes off into the office with the two other black ladies that Molly stiffed earlier. And so, you know, Molly's kind of standing there. And she really played herself right there. Because you know how some people stand there for like 20 seconds too long. And everybody's sitting at you staring with those big eyes and that plaster don't smile. Like, yeah, bitch, can you go? You, yeah, you're, you're played. You can leave. Bye. And so now Molly is a one man island at her law firm and she is going to be working by herself for this foreseeable future. So it sucks to be Molly. Um, And with that being said, I will say, I, I don't know if anybody else has anything to say about this, but I think that Dorian's being a real baby back bitch. He is. And that's why she should have. Because it's Dorian. I just want to know how the same black ladies that was uh, kikiing with Molly about Torian right. being such a whole hole now in his face. Real right. talk, I don't know. She shouldn't have. She sh- shouldn't have burned bridges with everybody. Like the way Molly went about it was fucked up. But it's like, mm, niggas are shady. Mm. Well, see, I think they united because they hate the same person, which is Molly, and that happens at work. That happens. You're right. You're right. Very but true. I don't. But I think I think she should have made friends with the black girls first. And then they could have created an alliance, and then it wouldn't have mattered what Torian thinks of her. So she would have had backup at the office, but she already fucked up. See, and now Molly done played herself, and now those two women are playing themselves because what is Torian gonna have they back now? No, the first opportunity he gets to leave their asses in the dust, they gonna be where in exactly. the dust. Yep. So, I mean, and it's hard for me because on one hand, I do feel like fuck Torian. You know what I mean? That nigga ain't shit. Fuck him. 
But then at the same time, it's like, okay, well, you chose that, you chose that bridge to be on and you just burnt it down after you, you know, you jumped from one burning bridge and then you set the other bridge on fire while you were standing on it, you know? And so for her, it's like, on one hand, I get it. Fuck Torian, but either you need to be the baddest bitch that don't give a fuck if anybody fucks with you, or you need to play nice with the niggas you need to play nice with. No, you need to play nice with the niggas you need to play nice with, because if you that's not on... that's not going to get you with that's not going to get you where you not in this scenario it's not going to get her where she where she wants to go and she's really not that type of nigga yeah i was going to say you if know, you want to be, be about that attention. fuck that shit life then you need right. to be about that fuck that shit life and you're not right. unfortunately exactly. she's already she might have already fucked herself over past redemption so possible we will see um, i feel like that's the cliche shit i feel like she's going to kill that shit but still have no friends Mm. I don't know. Do you know you do you invite the girls to Essence Fest or something? I don't know. Get y'all go get your hair braided or something together. You got a bond. It's a sister sister moment. Let a bitch uh, hold a head scarf when it's raining. I don't know. Um. So Issa and Ashley, I think, is what we decided to call her for further notice. Uh, they have a meeting together where they're having a conversation, and Issa basically gives her the rundown, and she seems super duper excited about it. She thinks that it's a great idea. She um, knows people at Rockefeller to be able to get some acts. Like she, she has these connections, and it looks like uh, Issa's block party is ten times more real and more realistic than it was before. Now that she has a partner in our good friend Ashley. So as they're leaving this bar, this white woman comes up to her and is like, hey, don't forget the trip. What was it? Was it hip hop or trip hop that she said? I forget. Well, she's like, oh, hey, don't forget this this music night that's here. And she's like a big and smiling and shit. And they're like, oh, oh no, she said it was indie rock. That's indie was. rock. Indie rock. <laughs> Even uh-huh. worse. I thought she said hip hop. I'm a lot less offended, though. Um, So she gives them a fly and it's like, oh, don't forget the indie rock night. And they're both like, okay. And they walk out. (laughs) They walk out. Talking to me now. Thank you. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. And so they, you know, walk out and they're like, girl, mm mm. So, you know, Issa's like, oh, do you need a ride? You know, I lift. And she was like, no, girl, I actually got a date. And she was like, okay, well, girl, you know, I'll see you later. And so they, um, they had. Lift must be giving her some bread. Amazing. Oh, they're giving HBO some bread because they've sent lit, lit at least 17 times just in this one episode. Bruh. Every episode. Yeah. Uber yeah. Uber could never. Who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we can actually mm. finish this uh, little bit of the scene out now. It turns out that our friend Ashley was going on a date with Lawrence. Oh. Yeah. Small fucking world, right? I was she like, can do better. No. She can do better. So that Actually, was her I... event, and he was there. Like, oh yeah, some I got an event coming. You know, oh can I bring my boys? Yep. I mean, so, yeah, and and whether if if he would have known about that, I feel like he would have been there anyway. Because who doesn't want to go and see Last Dragon with a bunch of niggas in the park? With a bunch exactly. Of black That's beautiful. What? Nigga, that's love. Smell like fried chicken and, and shea butter, nigga. Yeah, no, I'll yeah. be down. So, um, it so she says, you know, like, oh hey, you know, I you thought that you were a little scared off when I told you that I was divorced, but you know, I'm glad that you decided to see me. And you know, Lawrence is kind of like, ah, well, nah, you know. And so this made this is what really drove home after I watched it the second time. Uh, this really drove home that look that East, that Lawrence gave to Issa when Issa kind of said, like, you know, I'm not really doing the block party anymore. Is that he's decided that, okay, if it's going to be worth it, then I'm going to go and try and date somebody who's, I don't know if it's, I don't know necessarily if he's going directly for divorces, but I think that he recognizes the value in dating a person who's been in a relationship, tried to make it work, and didn't work out. Mm-hmm. versus just dating someone who's never been married nev- and, you know, never really put the effort in to um, never really put the effort in to save a relationship or never, you know, been in a deep relationship to where it was, you know, anything that was really worth saving. Not to say that, the, yeah. you know, I mean, that, again, that's a little hypocritical because the well, nigga I mean, wasn't the truth, willing to work with is, Issa, though. You ain't never really, you ain't never really had to say you sorry till you've been married and really mean that shit because that motherfucker ain't going nowhere. So there's there's a definite upside to dating somebody who's been in a uh, married or committed relationship because they'll you know they may be a little bit more careful about what they do you know 
how they move, you know, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, have more direction, which is, I think, what Lawrence is looking for just overall in himself and the person that he's choosing to date is some direction. Yeah. Um. Anybody else? All right. Cool. I just think his father got in his head and he just giving her a chance, but he's also finding out at the same time, hey, you know, she's kind of cool. I think he has that ambition that he's looking, that he's been missing, that he missed out of Issa and that he's been missing from Issa. You know, because, I mean, to be real, he seemed very, very shocked when he found out, like, okay, I quit. We got y'all. It was like, damn, really? You know, she had been working there for five years and then for her to quit and then it's like, oh, I'm doing this block party. He seemed really into that ambitious part of her was like okay cool block party i can help you out with that you're working on the business plan i feel it i feel it mm-hmm. and then the next time i see you that shit ain't happening what, what happened you know what i mean and um i think it also speaks a little bit to his character because we remember in the first season even though it wasn't going well he had quit he'd lost his job and he was like fuck it i'm gonna go out here and i'm gonna go and i'm gonna grind for myself and it was unsuccessful but you know, he was out there supposedly trying to do something a couple of years ago. It was a bad example. I had a point. Point is, is that I think that oh, okay. I think that Lawrence respects ambition, and I think that one thing that he's disliked about Issa overall is the fact that she doesn't seem that ambitious. And when she showed some ambition, he was kind of into it. And then to see it just be out like a fucking light, he was like, "Oh, okay. Well, let me go to somebody who." is ambitious and who does have all of these qualities I like you know find somebody who works for him like Issa said mm-hmm. alright I'm just tired of seeing him and I'm tired of hearing about him well I I think it's fair to say that we're going to see a lot more of him in season 3 yep. <sighs> 4 season 4 yeah right 4 4 4 sorry um, I'm here for it I'm loving seeing Lawrence's <laughs> whole character arc I figured the quicker we get through his character arc the quicker we can decide if he's really going to be here past season four because I'm, I'm not going to be mad if he's not but i just more chat um please and thank you yes so we also see molly call andrew and she she apologizes and she apologizes um she basically calls him and is just like you know what sometimes i'll be tripping and I'm sore. And Andrew's kind of like, uh, okay. And we don't really get a resolution to it, but he doesn't hang up on her. So I guess that's good. Uh, I, was, I, so didn't just, it, um, I didn't read it. I didn't just read it as okay. Because that so, deep side I didn't is read like. It that way either. I mean, she gave a it, good apology. It wasn't that she, bad. It, he was like, I'm still mad at you, but I am going to accept that because I, rec- I, I read it as I'm still mad at you, but I'm going to accept it because I recognize that this is hard for you. Yeah, she did some real nigga shit. So That's we just like, going to ignore how this man just cut to with his hair just flowing like that and he was looking all fine. Oh yeah, the bundles we was were out. We were going to ignore it, but we, you, we knew you wasn't, so here you go. Listen, when that, he, oh my goodness, when they cut to the scene, I went, oh. He's just sitting there so casually. Oh my gosh, he has been upgraded to husband. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. For me, I I guess I read it a little bit different, but for me, it was just kind of like I I guess the side for y'all was like okay. For me, the side was like man, bitch, because that's how I felt when she called. I was like, bitch, if you don't get the fuck off this man phone. Well, that's what he was on at first, you know. And he told her he was basically like, I ain't got time for your shit. What do you want? I'm doing right. shit. And Get he was to the just point. there playing video. Right. So I don't think he was, if he didn't want to talk to her by now, I mean, he didn't want to talk to her at the crib, but he was like, I'm game, you're here. So I, what the fuck is going on? He knew his boy wasn't home, so he was like, just let her do, you know, let Asa do Asa. Let me see what you're really on. He's, he's not in the mood for her shit. I want more Andrew. I'm not even going to lie. Bring him he up. seems cool. I need more Andrew. Because I like the way he makes Molly act. I like them two together. I'm not shipping them just yet, but I do think he has a good effect on her. So because he's honest, and so he makes her honest. Is that what it is? That's probably what it is. I believe so. And I think that it's also his his level of confidence to where for him, like he he likes Molly, and it's a pure thing. And he's seen her 
like a fuck up at like, her worst. I don't know about worst, but well, he's, to him that's the worst. I mean, the first person, to, first time you met somebody, you got to see him like that. He's like, okay. Well, you gave me drugs. I don't think that that accounts all the way, but I I feel like he has a level of confidence in him where it's like I've already seen you. I guess yeah, sure, the worst. I've already seen you down bad. And so knowing that, you know, this is kind of what I have to deal with and everything like that, like I can take you or leave you. I'm not diving on top of you. I'm also not, you know, running away from you. So if you fuck this up, it's going to purely be on you and you, it's going to be you who fucks this up for you. I guess is the short of it. I'm not going to do shit. I'm going to sit over here. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be supportive. I'm going to be cool. And, you know, you start tripping and it's you that's tripping. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I ain't even did shit i just got here right so i just def- my third day out <laughs> i don't know it's one of my third day being out here i don't know shout out to little uzi um and then we have the scene that we have all been waiting for Issa. uh you see her come from the gate and she's walking in and who do we have but nathan's fine ass about two feet behind her looking like a kicked puppy mm. <sighs> and so he's sitting there all pathetic and uh you know she just is like what the fuck do you want and he's just he just lets it all out where he's like you know i haven't talked to you in the last month and i'm really sorry but sometimes i just i I went back to houston because sometimes i just get really down and i can't talk to anybody and you know i fucked up and i was wrong and i'm sorry and blah 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 whatever uh because i also forgot to add that at one point he did drop the flowers off to her apartment and leave them at the door uh when she was gone but um and so Issa's just like nigga you left you didn't say shit to me I didn't fucking ask you to come into my life and set shit up for just for you to knock it all the fuck down with your shit and Nathan was just, just looking like a nigga. so pathetic and just so fine mm. I, I forgave him right then I was like it's okay baby I ah. did too yeah. Huh, soft assholes I'm I so weird they got black ass back in that house that nigga don't just get to Come into your life, fuck you on a Ferris wheel, and then leave you to think of high and dry for a whole month. You gotta forgive him so you can like do the double inspection of the dick. She was actually high no, because there's more doubly dry. stacked dick or somewhere else. Okay, you gotta you gotta forgive him temporarily on a probationary notice, to just be so you gotta inspect the dick again, and then if the dick is good, then you gotta let go and let God. Walk her black ass in the house and unpacking her damn boxes. <sighs> I forgave him. I, I, so I felt like such an asshole because as soon as I saw him and he was looking down at the ground and he was shifting his weight back and forth, I was like, oh, that's oh. okay. Oh. <laughs> and his jaw. Oh. See his jawline. I'm not it's... doing this with y'all. So it's been real. This okay, been hold on. Real... We, let's let's <laughs> finish. Cap. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm just speaking my heart. The conversation basically ends with him being like, you know, I'm really sorry. I just, you know, sometimes I get into these these moments or, you know, where I get really I mean, overall he was describing depression how it sounds to me. But I get really mm-hmm. depressed and, and I just like he was alluding to somebody's mental illness. I don't wonder if it's undiagnosed or diagnosed. Because he, he mm-hmm. definitely looked a little disheveled. He looked like he had lost yeah, some weight. He was quivering and yeah. He wasn't no, super he fine, but he was still fine as fuck. Um, it's true. <laughs> it's true. And so, you uh, know, it, she, it seems like she kind of gave him like a tacit, I accept your apology, but we all know that everything's not on the same page because she just kind of walks off and is like, okay, well, I got to see what I think and how I feel, and I just need some time to think about it. And she walks into the apartment, and he does that thing where he kind of waits and he kind of like, he kind of has like a, it's almost a, a fuck, I fucked it up, but maybe not type of thing and I was just like I forgive you daddy it's okay <sighs> I'm a sucker I know I am I ain't shit um, and so what do you guys think of Nathan's reason slash excuse for ghosting Issa for a month we'll start off with you know, let's, uh, let's start I off with Lloyd I want to Lloyd. believe him mm-hmm. I want to believe him but at the same time just because you may or may not have a mental illness does not make you any less culpable, nigga. You knew you was wrong when you was doing that shit. You knew. I, I want to believe him, but I'm still like, I'm still mad for her. Like, you just don't give me Ferris wheel dick and disappear for a month. That's unacceptable. It's not okay. I don't give a fuck what your reason is unless somebody died and apparently nobody did. 
The only person Sorry. after a month that should have been dead is you. Uh, Crystal? I think his um, I think his reason is legit. I understand that because I get like that too where I just mm-hmm. I, need a mo- I need a moment. But uh-huh. he could but he could have hit her with a text like, hey, sorry I haven't spoken to you in a week or whatever. My bad. I'm just going through something. I need some time, but I'll be back. Like, so, something. And then leave it alone. So then, how long, because I feel like he probably had that moment, of, but how long is too long? You know what I mean? To be like, you to know, wait, come back. Because or... after a certain point, it's like, well, damn, I ain't said nothing in two weeks. And so then it's like, well, it's too late for me to say anything. And then it's like, okay, well, then I'm just not going to say nothing because it's already been too late. And then by the time you finally get the courage up, it's been a month. Are you talking about him? Or are yeah, you talking Nathan. about her? Him. I mean, I would, how late is I too late to come back? Because if a nigga hit me up two weeks later, I'm going to be just as pissed as if it was a month. I, I mean, I would still be upset, but I would still appreciate the notice and I'd be more understanding. You know, I'm over here talking shit. I'm a sucker ass bitch. I would have took him back. He's so fine. Um, see why? Like, yeah. <laughs> when did you have feelings? When did you grow feelings? When did this become a thing? No, he was <laughs> fine as fuck. <laughs> Who? I didn't. I don't have any feelings. I was just saying for the dick. Oh, That's girl, all, bitch. Sure. You were a liar. You definitely have feelings. I'm talking Soft about that ass, cold heart. My heart, heart crab name right there. My I, heart I, is I, connected to my vagina, no and I can't help that. I just think you're fine, and I'm I'm a sucker That's for a, a fine issue. ass groveling nigga. I can't help it. Uh-huh. That's why they them green eyes. That's, That's why, why they ugly niggas right though. Them. You've seen my ex. Right. That's why they when a nigga begs, and I like it when a nigga's on his knees and he's helpless. I just like dick. That's all. Okay. That's well, where I was Lloyd, at. my thing is, is that I'm a sucker for <laughs> I'm a sucker for fine niggas, so I date ugly niggas, so I don't have to deal with it. You know, I know my strengths and my weaknesses. You ever get, you ever gave an ugly nigga a chance and then he try to do you like a fine nigga would? Listen, <laughs> how who the fuck? dare you, motherfucking do you goblin? Think? Do you know who I am? How da- you know what? Let's get we're getting off track. See why? How'd you feel? <laughs> I, 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 I feel like we should end the show right there. I have nothing to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was perfect. Well, All of me... that was perfect for that moment. I, hey, I, well, I think that um, I agree most with Lloyd in the sense of it's like I want I believe I do believe him and I believe like you know I didn't want to talk to anybody for a month because I've definitely done that to people but a lot yeah. of people already know that I'm a low but I'm a low maintenance type of friend anyway where we don't have to talk every you know every once you only got to talk once every three months and it's always gonna be love you know what I mean well I mean that's Issa's, that's everybody's point is communication is key. And, but when it comes you to know, tr- when you move in, when you move in fast and you fucking on Ferris wheels real quick and jumping in pools, you don't have time to have, you know, that talk like fucking hey. on Ferris wheels, committing fucking felonies. Nigga, you can hey. send me a text. You don't, have, uh, you don't have the time to talk to really be like, hey, I'm not really. So look, some people think that, you know, I, I don't love them or I don't come around. But really, sometimes I just disappear because I got to. And this is why. And whoopty wop. It's much easier to have that conversation over some chicken and some beer and just kicking it, then, you know, they ain't had no time to do that. So that's what happens when you fuck somebody quick and, you you know, trying to be in a relationship quick. Like, you don't even know that nigga. You don't know shit. You don't know if he got a mental illness. You don't know the nigga middle name. You, ain't, you don't know nothing. Well, you waking up crazy. I will say, um, but I mean, the thing about that, though, was like, I think that that's easier to do with friends because friends understand that. And I, like my friends know that about me where like I'm not even necessarily fall off the edge of the map. I don't know. Maybe it is off the edge of the map for people. But like I said, I'm a low maintenance friend. So if you don't talk to me for if my friends not talking to me for a month isn't automatically weird. You know what I mean? Just like, oh, Raven's off doing her thing. She's, you still see me on Instagram, whatever. You still know that I'm alive. But I think that it's, I haven't, I've never done that to anybody as far as a relationship goes. And yeah, so, that don't fly. Yeah, you can't, I can't just be like, okay, well, sometimes I need a month off from the world. Okay, well, nigga, a month I off from the world besides me. State. Like, I, my first question is going to be, what the fuck happened that you had to leave zip code to uh, go relax enough? To think about what needed to happen and then bring your ass back here. Like, what really happened? Because whether it was light or it was heavy, it's going to tell me a testament to who you are as a person. And if she really liked him, that would be a smart thing to know. I mean, but what if like, the answer is like nothing? Nothing happened. I just really had started having a rough 
a rough couple of days and it turned into a rough that's couple still of a weeks. Very, as long as that's an honest answer, that's still a very you, good you, thing to you, know. You know what the key word was in that whole sentence? Couple of days, not a month. Good night. Yeah. A weekend, my nigga. A week. Mm. But what, what if you happens. need a month? Then you, you need to tell me month, that you need, need a month. I'm not saying don't take your month, yeah. but don't expect me to take your apology and be, just be cool with it. Like, if she would have been like, fuck oh, you, nigga, okay. talk to me again, right. I would have understood that, too. She had okay. a good thing about it. Fair. And the other thing about it is whether he's been doing this type of thing or this is a new type of thing, the way that he acted, he knew that it wasn't cool that he did it. So mm-hmm. it's just like communication. Tell people what's up. Like if you like you said, if you need a month, take a month. But you knew it was wrong how you took that month between you and her. That wasn't cool. You wouldn't have liked it if she did that to you, especially if you do have a mental health issue, because that would have set you on fire. Not even that, but you she he treated her like this is one of his niggas. She ain't Andrew. She ain't the uh, the black nigga, the African American one, which right. we still don't know his name. Uh, his okay. name they is. They know that you be ghosted from time to time. His name is Julian. That's why you gotta temporarily forgive him so you can do the double checking of the dick Good to assess night, the situation go properly. All right. And so it's after science. Issa, no, it's we're science. done. We're done. After Issa gets done talking to Nathan, Nathan walks off. All fine and light skin. Issa goes into her apartment, puts on some music, and finally finishes unpacking. Um, she sits down on her couch, has a drink, watches TV, and just has another moment, or another one of those, bitch, I live here by myself. This is my shit. If I want to lay, put my feet on the couch, spill my drink on my couch, I will. Why? Because this is my shit. And she looks Light. off looking all pretty fine and happy. And that is the end of season three. I have a question. Huh. He's supposed to be broke as fuck. Where is she getting this Pier 1 Imports furniture from? Where is she? <laughs> yeah, the shit that needs to be on. You don't know how much she been lifting? And unlike right. the state. Like, city, where is she getting uh, these clothes like from city. Zara? Like, she is yeah, dressed she in sure Zara. Is fresh as fuck. She's dressed in Nordstrom. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. I thought that we was just trying to find jobs. Like, what are we doing? Where are you getting this money from? Do you have a sugar daddy? That's all I'm saying. Um, she been lifting, sis. They, I would probably she, say that you're not. Seventeen thousand times they don't send her her royalties. I will probably <laughs> say that um, overall is probably stuff that she's accumulated over the years, and just also things that you're not supposed to notice how notice how expensive it is. Because I could definitely say that there's a tier, there's a difference in how Issa dresses versus how Molly dresses, and it's clear oh, that yeah. Molly shit is super expensive, and it's not. We know because we know the brands and we know who the people are, but G- Issa is a very jeans and t-shirt type of person. You know, as far as her furniture, I saw that blue couch and I'm like, bitch, that's fancy. Hold on. Yeah. Um, did you see that bookcase? I think I feel like she had that bookcase. I could be wrong though. That's new. I don't remember seeing that damn bookcase. And that bookcase look looks like it would cost you at it least two hundred dollars. Her she she been out here, she got her severance check for we got y'all. You know, she been lifting, selling that street meat. So she out here. Listen, ma'am, uh, madam. Madam. Perfect way to end the season. So, guys, we appreciate y'all for listening. We thank y'all for holding out with us for these last two months as we recapped Insecure. Lloyd, is there anything that you were looking forward to for next season? The moment that either Issa or Ashley figures out that they got dick in common as well as this event. Awesome. Uh, Where can they (laughs) find you, Lloyd? I literally just said, oh, where to find me? Uh, that girl underscore Lloyd on Twitter and IG. Don't request me on Facebook. I'm not taking uh, It's just not going to happen, y'all. So there's that. Uh, CY, one thing that you're looking forward to for next season? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more about Chad and his relationship. Oh, my God. Yes. More Chad. Let's meet Leah. I want to see the wedding. I need it all. Okay. <laughs> and where can they find hey, you, you all over? You can find me anywhere on the internet at CEE. WHY612. Crystal, one thing that you were looking forward to next season. Non dick related, please. Oh. <laughs> she ain't got nothing to say. Um, Chad. Yeah. I'm excited to see Chad too. And where can they find you all over the internet? Oh, and more Kelly. Uh, yeah, you can find me 
on Twitter, Tumblr as the Chrissy Chula, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook as Chrissy Chula. And then uh, if you want to email me, email me at ask underscore Chrissy at yahoo.com. Uh, my Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Chrissy Chula. And yeah, I think that's it. And as for me, I am excited to find out what the fuck happened between Tiffany and Derek, Issa. I ain't forgot uh, shit. Well, go. All right, play cousins. It's been real. Thank you. Nigga, fuck that. I want to know. You. A real thing. Okay. <laughs> Attica. Season, a real nigga Attica. recap. Fuck that shit. I want to know. Somebody owe me a goddamn explanation. Where was Kelly when she, where was Tiffany when she was supposed to be watching that slave show, Issa? I ain't forgot shit. Y'all better not let me. She was pregnant then and fell asleep. That's all, that's all it was. It's going to be so anticlimactic. You so mad. I swear to God, if it's because she fell asleep, I'm going to be so pissed. Issa, you owe me. I'm just kidding. I'll be excited (laughs) for whatever happens. Anyway, guys, until next season, peace. Bye. Bye.